everybody, this is Mina Aza and you are watching the surgical whiteboard. Our first episode will be about the spleen. The spleen is the organ of odd numbers. The numbers 1 to 11 are a good way to remember useful facts about the spleen. 1, 3 and 5 represent the size of spleen in inches. The spleen is a relatively small organ, 5 inches or about 13 centimeters long. 7 cm wide and about 2.5 cm thick. 7 is the weight of spleen in ounces, which equals about 200 grams. 9 to 11 are the numbers of ribs on the left side. These ribs cover the costal or the outer surface of the spleen. Now we will move on to take a look on the blood supply of the spleen. To follow the course of the blood supply of the spleen, we will start at the abdominal aorta, then the celiac trunk, which is the first unpaired branch of the abdominal aorta. It is a short artery perpendicular to the abdominal aorta and gives soon three important branches, the splenic artery, the left gastric artery, and the common hepatic artery. Before it enters the splenic hilum, the splenic artery gives off the left gastroepiploic artery and the short gastric arteries that supply the stomach. Here we can see the tortuous course of the splenic artery on the upper border of the pancreas. It ends inside the spleen as a 5 to 6 end segmental branches. Now we will follow the splenic vein that runs behind the posterior surface of the pancreas. It soon receives the inferior mesenteric vein and then unites with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. This is an important anatomical landmark that happens just behind the neck of the pancreas. Another important relation with the pancreas is that the tail of the pancreas is closely related to the hilum of the spleen, in close proximity to the splenic vessels. Now we will move to the peritoneal ligaments of the spleen. The first important peritoneal ligament is the gastrosplenic ligament. It is a triangular peritoneal fold between the greater curvature of the stomach and the medial border of the spleen. It contains the short gastric vessels and the left gastroepiploic vessels. The second ligament is the splenophrenic ligament between the upper pool of the spleen and the diaphragm. It may contain fleshy fibers that bleed easily during splenectomy. Number three is the splenocolic ligament between the lower pool of the spleen and the splenic flexure of the colon. Unwise traction during colonoscopy, left hemicolectomy, may lead to capsular tear of the lower pool of the spleen. Number four is the phrenocolic ligament between the splenic flexure and the diaphragm. Although it's not attached to the spleen, the spleen lies directly on it like a shelf. The fifth important peritoneal ligament is not visible in this view. It is the splenorenal ligament, which is now covered by the stomach. We will imagine a cross section, just like CT images. This is the spleen at the far left side, and here is the stomach. And behind it, in the retroperitoneal space, lies the pancreas and the kidney. The left kidney, of course. This is the gastrosplenic ligament. And here behind, the peritoneum is reflected on the left kidney and winds back towards the hilum of the spleen. This is again the splenorenal ligament, which covers the tip of the tail of the pancreas and the splenic artery and vein. There are more peritoneal ligaments related to the spleen but these five are the most clinically significant ones, so try to remember them. One more time, they are the gastrosplenic ligament, the splenophrenic ligament, the splenocolic ligament, the phrenocolic ligament, and the splenorenal ligament. The functions of the spleen are simply to destroy the old RPCs, storage of blood components, like RBCs and uh, thrombocytes. And lastly, an immunological function as a part of the lymphatic system of the body. It plays a role in uh, T-cell activation 
um, by Antgen presentation. Now let's link the basic knowledge with the clinical practice. Our first topic is related to the shape and the function of the spleen, the hypersplenism. It is simply an increase in the splenic volume and function. Splenomegaly when the spleen is more than 13 cm in span or 300 grams as an estimated weight. Plus increased function of destruction of the blood components like RBCs, anemia, platelets, thrombocytopenia, and white blood cells, leukopenia. Or sometimes the three together, which is called pancytopenia. The diagnosis depends on the abdominal ultrasonography to confirm splenomegaly, complete blood count, especially RBCs, platelets, and white blood cell count. And in cases of pancytopenia, a bone marrow aspiration and cytology is indicated to exclude bone marrow depression as a cause of pancytopenia. As in case of hypersplenism or peripheral destruction of blood components, we can expect a hyperproliferative bone marrow as a compensatory mechanism. A main cause of hypersplenism is portal hypertension, which in turn leads to increasing splenic size and function. such as in cases of liver cirrhosis or fibrosis, due to chronic hepatitis, bilharziasis, or long-term alcohol abuse. The site of the spleen and its relation to the left hemithorax leads us to speak about the second important clinical topic, splenic injury. Splenic injury can be spontaneous. Here it is named the spontaneous splenic rupture. This is a very rare complication of malaria. More common is the spleen injured due to a blunt or a penetrating abdominal trauma. A blunt thoracoabdominal trauma to the left side lead to a fracture of the 9th to the 11th rib a sharp broken end of the rib can easily injure the spleen. The third category of splenic injuries are the iatrogenic injuries. As mentioned before, when we talk about the peritoneal ligaments, left hemicolectomy or a colonoscopy can lead to attraction on the splenocolic ligament, leading to a tear in the lower splenic pool. So during gastrectomy, traction on the gastrosplenic ligament can cause injury. Now we would like to add some hints about the plant abdominal trauma. Possible injuries that can lead to a splenic rupture are direct abdominal trauma, a fall on the left side of the body accompanied by rib fractures, and car accidents. Here we must stress on the importance of a car seatbelt, and I mean a three-point standard seatbelt that fixes the body in three points, the left shoulder, the right hip, and the left hip. This three-point mechanism is very important. To prove this, let's see what would happen if we ignored this three-point structure. For example, if the lower part that joins the right and the left hips absent, the body will slide downward and forward during a collision, and the knee will hit the dashboard, leading to what is commonly known as a dashboard fracture, which is a fracture of the posterior rim of the acetabulum by the femoral head. On the other hand, when the upper component is absent, like in a plain seat belt, during direct collision, the body will be thrown forward and above. Thorax and the abdomen will hit the steering wheel directly, leading to rib fractures, pneumothorax, lung, or splenic injury. So keep safe and always use your seat belts.
The second remark, splenic injury can be at first asymptomatic. The patient can be hemodynamically stable, even walking into the emergency department on foot asking for a quick checkup after a minor car accident. This must not be taken lightly. This patient may have a small subcapsular hematoma that remains silent up to two weeks after the accident before it reveals itself in the form of internal hemorrhage and hemodynamic shock. Now we will move to another interesting topic which is the classification of splenic injury. Stage 1 is a small subcapsular hematoma or a minor laceration smaller than 1 cm. Stage 2 is a larger subcapsular hematoma approximately 10 to 50% of the splenic surface area or a slightly larger laceration 1 to 3 cm but without vascular injury. Stage 3 is a massive hematoma about more than 50% of the splenic surface area and may lead to hemodynamic instability or a laceration more than 3 cm. Or is a marked laceration of the spleen involving injury of segmental or even high love vessels. And lastly, a stage 5 splenic injury is a completely shattered spleen with a complete high latitude and massive bleeding. And of splenic injury relies directly on the classification of this injury. A stage 1 injury can be treated conservatively in a hemodynamically stable patient. Stage 2 and 3 candidates to spleen reserving surgeries such as capsular sutures, surgical glue, a mesh, or a segmental resection. For severe forms like stage 4 and 5, the treatment of choice is splenectomy. Like any surgical procedure, one can expect complications after a splenectomy. Of course, the most common complication is bleeding, that occur mostly in the first three post-operative days. Also, injury of the pancreatic tail is possible during the ligation of the splenic vessels as the hilum, which can lead to a pancreatic fistula, or a severe traction of the spleen upwards and tear the splenic flexure of the colon its attachment to the splenocolic ligament. Also, surgical site infection is possible and may be presented as a subphrenic abscess. This can be one of the causes of fever of unknown origin. The most feared complication of splenectomy is the OPSI which stands for overwhelming post-splenectomy infection. It can occur up to two years after a splenectomy, usually due to a pneumococcal infection. As it is challenging to treat, prevention is the best way. This means vaccination against streptococcal pneumonia. Ideally, two weeks before an elective splenectomy. But after emergency splenectomy, the vaccination must be performed two weeks after the operation. Lastly, the post splenectomy thrombosis usually occurs due to the absence of the splenic function at the storage of the platelets. The platelet count can rise up to 1 million per cubic milliliter. Okay, it is usually asymptomatic, but some authors suggest. A prophylactic antiplatelet therapy like aspirin or colbidogrel. This remains a level C recommendation depending on expert opinion without a hard statistical evidence. It also may be linked to the portal vein thromboses or the mesenteric vein thromboses. This is more common after splenectomy in patients with portal hypertension.